What's the difference between a struct and a class? And more importantly, when should you use one or the other? That's the question we're tackling today on Fluency++. Let's start by the difference between a struct and a class. The legal difference. There is no difference at all. Well, that's a lie, but a very small and insignificant one. The only technical difference there is between a struct and a class is that if you don't say anything about scoping, what's in a struct is going to be public, whereas what's in a class is going to be private. And that includes inheritance. If a struct inherits from something else and you don't say how it inherits, then it's going to be public. And for the class, if you don't say anything, it's going to be private. Of course, you can have public and private members and inheritance if you just write it in either struct or class. Apart from that, there is absolutely no difference and that's the technical truth. You can do anything in a struct that you can do in a class. You can have inheritance in a struct, you can have public, private, protected members, virtual functions, even templates, overloads, what have you. Whatever you want, you can have it in a struct. So, how do we make a choice whether to use a struct or a class? It comes down to convention. Choosing between struct and class, given a convention, allows you to express your intentions better in code. So the convention for a struct is that a struct is a bundle. A struct is just there to stitch things together, several objects, like objects that, I don't know, that come out of a function, for example, and you want to send several objects in the same place, and you can use a struct that's, that says there is no unity, it's just a bundle. Actually, there's a question you may ask, it's what's the difference between a struct and a pair for that regard, or a tuple? Well, the pair or the tuple also put things together in a bundle. The difference between a struct and a pair or a tuple is that the struct has a name. So if there's a name over the group of things you're putting together, you'd rather use a struct. If there's absolutely no name and those two or several things happen to be together at the same place at the same time, but that's just by happenstance, then you can use a pair or a tuple. In this regard, the struct rises the level of abstraction of that bundle a bit by giving it a name. And that name characterizes what that bundle represents. Now about classes. A class does things. That's the essence of a class. A class has responsibilities. It means that it offers an interface composed of methods that describe what this class can do. You don't care about what data is in a class when you're a user of that class. Actually, it may not even have any data at all and that doesn't matter. What matters is its interface. So a class raises the level of abstraction way more than a struct does because it hides an implementation behind an interface that describes what this class can do. Another thing that class can do is implementing invariants. So an invariant is a property that must hold true all the time in a class from the perspective of a client of that class. For example, say in a string, you can have a buffer that contains the characters that populate that string and also a size in the string. And you want that at all time from the perspective of the user of that string you want that the value in size corresponds to the number of characters there are in that string. And the contract of a class is that in its constructor, it's going to put those invariants in place. And all methods are going to assume that these invariants hold invariants that have been put in place by the constructor. A struct doesn't do that at all. A struct is just a bundle, you can see right through it, and there's no relation between its members. Today, that's all we have, struct or class. But in the distant future, there may be more than that 
with the Meta Classes proposal. That's a topic for another video. We're going to end this video by reading four of the C++ core guidelines of which I took inspiration for making it. One, organize related data into structures being struct or class. Two, use class if the class members have an invariant. Use struct if data can vary independently. Three, represent the distinction between an implementation and an interface by using a class. And four, use class rather than struct if any member is not public. If you like this video, feel free to share it, subscribe to the channel and put a thumb up. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.